So Wes, whiskey remains safe to drink when stored properly pretty much indefinitely. But one of the debates is how do you properly store whiskey? In your mouth. Um, that is a good place for mm. sure. But do you need to keep your corks wet Ooh. to keep the seal good so that the whiskey doesn't go bad in the bottle? That is what we are going to talk about today. So if you want to hear about it, stick around. Boom. Welcome into the world famous uh, Bourbon Real Talk studio. Um, Randy and I are live here with you and we cannot get started. We absolutely cannot get started without thanking our Patreons. That's true. Our patrons. Patrons. Our patrons. friends online who support the channel faithfully with their generous gifts monthly. And we hope that they understand and we want you to know that it's just not a one way street here. Mm -mm. We're not just takers without givers. We have to be giving, and we give this content to you for every week for absolutely free. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the income for this or the support for this channel comes from both the online store and our faithful Patreon. So thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and its mission. We want to give you back that bonus content that you've grown to know and love. Special offers, of course, distillery takeovers, uh, barrel picks, in-person meetups, and of course, those virtual uh, bottle shares where we just go absolutely nuts online together, and it's a great time. Have a great time, yeah. yeah. And major discounts on merch, so, yeah. you know, whether whether you support the channel um, or you love the benefits, we are happy to have you as a patron. Absolutely. Thank All you. All right. So let's talk about some disclaimers for this one. This is a very controversial subject. When it came up the other day in Bourbon Real Talk community, there seemed to be some very strong feelings on both sides. Wow. You don't say. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, there's, you know, online resources. When you research this subject, you're going to find that sources that appear to be 100% credible completely disagree with each other mm. on this subject. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm going to explain scientifically what's going on inside the bottle. Okay. And we are going to hopefully use that information to lead us to a logical conclusion, uh, but it will be directly contradicted by some sources out there. Sure, yeah. Um, even some major distilleries. So just keep all of that in mind. Okay. All right, let's jump right into it. So okay. uh, uh, every bottle has a closure, right? But yep. some have natural cork closures. Mm -hmm. uh, but synthetics are getting more popular, yeah, screw are. tops, mm -hmm. and uh, you know those glass gaskets? Those are fun to try They're to fun. I, you, once you get it, you get it. But yeah. uh, up until then, like I've seen people almost hit themselves yeah, in the face. you can chip a tooth with that. I've seen people like shoot them across the room, and that's mm -hmm. kind of fun. Uh, but a lot of the classic whiskeys, especially the you know harder to find ones, they just feel like it's important that they use a natural cork mm -hmm. closure type, and uh, we know it's bad whenever the the, the seal's not good. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, that we know that's not good for the whiskey, um, but cork being a wood product, it expands when it is exposed to moisture. Right. That brings us to the point that there's a debate in the whiskey world about how to keep that wood expanded inside mm -hmm. the mouth of your bottle so that you know you keep a good seal and you're not you know allowing things to get in, you're not allowing things to get out. And I think a lot of the information comes from wine. Mm. So what do you know about storing wine? Um, that you need to store it on its side. That's right. To keep the keep the wine in contact with the cork at all times. That's right. Because and, and now there's all these studies showing that you're actually supposed to store it at an angle so that the wine touches part of the cork but not all the cork. Mm, yeah. And and you're starting to see stuff like that. But yeah, the concept is you store the wine on its side. Yeah. And that way the cork stays wet. Uh, but do you know why we don't store whiskey on its side? You know. Um, I would be scared to death to store my whiskey on the side. Because <laughs> like it could like I'd walk out there one day, <laughs> my floor would be flooded with whiskey, and um, that subfloor would be expanding rapidly. Um, yeah, yeah. So the reason why we don't store whiskey on its side is because wine is normally around 12, 14 percent ABV. Yeah. Um, but but whiskey is at least 40 percent ABV, mm. and ethanol is a caustic solvent, and yeah. it will eat cork. Yeah. It will literally degrade the cork if you leave it in contact. And so that's where this debate comes from of, well, let's keep the cork wet by, you know, shaking our bottles once every six months or every year or whatever. Um, and that's what's gonna keep the good seal. Um, but I have an alternate theory. 
Do you? I do. Let's hear it. Um, the alternate theory is ethanol is extremely evaporative. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 if, have you ever um, not finished your pour of whiskey and left it on the counter and then you come back the next morning? It's sawdust. And it's sawdust, basically. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it turns all cloudy and all that stuff. Yeah. That's because the ethanol evaporates like almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And so when people start talking about like fresh cracks and all of that stuff, chances are when they poured that whiskey in that glass and they go, oh, I, I let it breathe. Right, it's not it's not oxidating with oxygen in the air. It's ethanol that's it's leaving the glass because mm -hmm. it's evaporating. <clears throat> and if you let it do it enough, it'll actually change the ABV mm -hmm. of the spirit. And now you got problems, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that that ethanol was keeping all of these chemical compounds in in suspension, right? And so you change the alcohol content of a whiskey bottle. Now all of a sudden, all the the environment's different, and chemical reactions can start happening. And that's why stuff starts happening in your glass, and it combines and it settles, mm -hmm. and it's kind of gross. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. But because ethanol is so evaporative, the what what I'm been told by people who understand this type of thing is that the headspace in a whiskey bottle has a humidity level that is so high that you don't have to wet your cork. It keeps it a certain amount of moisture. It keeps the moisture that you mm. need in there. And so, but, so I said that yep. online and everybody lost their minds, yep. okay? And they were like, you're gonna ruin your whiskey. I can't tell you how many old bottles I've had the corks fall apart on. Mm -hmm. How many dusty bottles have you opened up? Have you ever opened up like a dusty wild turkey or a dusty yeah. Uh, Blanton's? Yeah. And what happens every time you open up a dusty wild turkey or, or a dusty blades? Every time. The cork is. The cork falls, falls apart. apart. Yeah. Right. It, regardless you of got, how it was stored. You got, you got sediment in the bottom of that whiskey from the cork. Have you ever opened up a really, really old bottle of wine? No. I Something, because uh, I used to drink birth year pours. Okay. Um, from uh, First Growth Bordeaux, right? I'd have one every year. I still have one left to get. But anyways, when you open those up, right? They actually have a special device to open up old bottles of wine. It's mm. not a regular corkscrew. Mm. Okay. And the reason why is because the corks are so degraded that if you put a corkscrew in it and try to pull it out, it just pulls the center of the cork out. Mm. Yeah. And it's more stuck to that to the outside Edge. rim. Yeah. And so there's a, a, a special device that has two flat pieces that go down on the outside and allow you to twist around mm. And then you they'll pull the cork out that way. Yeah. And if you want to reseal it, you're probably going to have to have a, uh, a another cork, right? Yeah. Because that that one's been damaged. And so when you think about what's happening with these these corks in wine, which is only 12, 14 percent ABV, over a very long period of time, they're de they're degrading, even though they're 100 percent in contact with the liquid that's supposed to keep them perfectly healthy. Mm -hmm. Why would we expect something different in whiskey? Ah, I knew I was a bigger Bourbon Real Talk fan than you. How do you know that? Well, because I don't just use a prideful goat, Glenn. I got an official Bourbon Real Talk tumbler. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I got this Bourbon Real Talk lanyard to carry my whiskey glass in. Oh, well, speaking of whiskey glasses, do you have one of these? No, I don't. Rocks glass. Oh, yeah? Yep, official. Well, I love my wife, and I bought her this official whiskey wife flask from Bourbon Real Talk. Well, that's cute and everything, but I got my wife one of these. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, and you can just add your own liquor, and it's an actual cocktail right there in a, in a jar. Me and my wife like to make cocktails, so we got this simple syrup off oh, the website. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you and your wife have one of these? This is an official sticker. You can only get these on the website. Uh, no, but I do have these official coasters that have the Bourbon Real Talk logo on them, and I'm representing. Hmm. Well, while you're representing those little coasters of yours, I've got an aroma kit. Do you? Yeah, so I can smell literally everything in bourbon. Everything. Well, I don't have that, but I do have this sample box that I keep all my samples in because I'm part of the community and I share samples. Yeah, but do you have Glen Toppers that are officially Bourbon Real Talk? I don't have that, but I do have this large whiskey carrying case for my glasses so that I don't break them. See, I knew you had that. That's why I have this, the smaller version, okay? It packs more easily into your suitcase. Uh -huh. I don't have to mess with that big old thing, okay? Suitcase, that's for lamos. Check this thing out. I have a bourbon real taut bottle carrying bag. You can't beat that. I don't know if I can because- And on top of that, I have a bourbon real talk t-shirt. I'm the bigger fan. Oh, I can beat that. Is it extra schmedium? No, I don't have extra schmedium. Ha! Extra schmedium. You might be the bigger fan, you win. I knew it. 
So whether you're a Bourbon Real Talk super fan or simply looking for quality whiskey swag, head over to bourbonrealtalk.com today. I mean, it seems like you did mention the difference in the ABV. So yeah. I guess that would be the only different factor. Right. And Well, it's not like more caustic, you know, solvent is right. going to make the cork degrade less. Right. Right. We know that if we turn it on its side, the cork's going to get eaten by the ethanol. Right. And so uh, it, <clears throat> it just brought up this idea. So uh, Dwayne Poor, he has the multi-million dollar whiskey collection mm-hmm. that we've documented twice so far on this podcast. He doesn't wet his corks. Right. Right. And he has bottles of whiskey that are worth more than a house. <laughs> yes, he does. And so what what I'm trying to get the word out there is that there's a lot of, you know, information floating around, but just scientifically, if ethanol is as evaporative as we know that it is, mm-hmm. the humidity inside this bottle is enough to keep at least the bottom of the cork expanded. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the cork issues that you hear people complaining about online are actually from the top of the cork. Mm. And so the question is, is there something that could be done to keep the top of the cork from drying out and becoming crumbly? And I don't know that there is unless you stored your whiskey inside like a humidor. Right. Yeah. Or you took your cork out every six months and dipped it in water and put it back in there. I mean, which would be probably affect the whiskey in a different way as well. So, I mean, I don't know. I think that what you said is makes the most sense. I'd be curious to see. If, if there's anything special that a distillery does to a cork before they cork the bottle, do, mm-hmm. they, do they wet the cork or do they do anything or they just stick a dry cork into a, a bottle of whiskey and roll on, roll on down the line? It's dry cork and they roll on down the line. <laughs> so right. obviously they don't, they, they think that that cork's gonna be fine for a certain period of time anyway. So. Sure, and, and the other thing that I found interesting is that you know people were talking about you know the corks becoming crumbly and all that stuff. But I have corks that we've taken out of wine bottles because Lindsay keeps the corks because she thinks she's, she's going to do a, a crafting project one day. <laughs> yeah. So we have like hundreds and hundreds of these corks. Some of them we've had for years and years and years. They're not crumbling. They're not sitting in any moisture or anything. They're, like right. That, so. They're not crumbling. So I, I think that it's just being in that environment and being exposed because the, the ethanol does get out of your bottle. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when we went to Four Roses and we were in the Century Lab? Yeah, yeah. We opened up that bottle. It was like 92 years old. Yeah. Um, and, and the chemist, he got excited, right? And he wanted to test the ABV of the of the 90-something-year-old whiskey. <laughs> it had gone from 90 proof down to 63. 62, or 63. Or 63 yeah. proof in a screw top. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So the ethanol is going to get out past your cork top, which is pretty through a screw top yeah. even right so yeah. it's going to get past your cork um and and that cork's going to get fully exposed um and so my conclusion is i don't think that we need to wet our corks no okay so what do you do with your whiskey um well one store it up right and i think it's important the environment you're storing in as well i mean i think obviously if you're storing a cork a corked bottle in your garage in Texas, and it's getting up to 150 <laughs> yeah. degrees in there. You're gonna have problems. You, you'll probably have some problems <laughs> with the cork, anyways. Yeah. So that's one thing. Just storing it in the right in the right place in, inside your house in a temperature controlled environment. Environment. Yeah. Out of the direct sunlight. That sort of that sort of thing. UV rays are damaging to whiskey. We know that for sure. So that's going to help protect not just the the cork itself, but the whiskey as, as a whole. And what and what's causing change in your bottle over time is probably not oxidation. It's probably evaporative loss. Right. Um, and there's also an argument that the pH level in the whiskey changes over time because it dissolves CO2. So mm-hmm. there's, there's CO2 in the atmospheric air. It dissolves and makes its way into the whiskey and changes the pH level. So I think those are the things that are changing the whiskey, not poor closures. Sure. Although, you know, if you left a bottle open, it would get destroyed in days. Right. Um, yeah. So you, you do want to make sure you have a good, good tight seal. But, you know, those are the general ideas of what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, something else you could do if you're going to store a bottle for a very long time, uh, you may want to use paraffin wax. Yep. Um, which it's it's kind of like a wax tape mm-hmm. that you can stretch and wrap around uh, the opening of your bottle, yep. and that might actually help with some of the evaporative loss over over time. Yeah, especially if you're going to be moving or anything, or you're going to be trans transporting bottles of any of any kind. Uh, that paraffin wax definitely comes in help. And and handy, helpful yeah. to, uh, and I wouldn't count on it too much going. if if your bottle's going to get exposed to some extreme heat because right. I've I literally went to go. Um, <clears throat> 
we had we had uh, bottles of whiskey that were being uh, brought from the distillery up to me from mm-hmm. Houston to Dallas, and a friend of mine was afraid to have them in the car because they weren't sealed. He was afraid he's, if he got pulled over, the cops yeah. would be like, "Why do you have twenty bottles of whiskey that are open?" <laughs> and so he put them in the back of his truck in the Texas heat. And when he got here, every one of them had popped their corks. Yeah, that, every one of them that, just just from heat exposure. Right. And so you know those are things that you you know need to keep in mind. But just remember, correlation is not causation, right? Mm-hmm. If your bottle's changing, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's oxidation. It could be other things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's entirely possible that your cork could be forming a strong seal at the bottom, but at the top be dry and shrinking, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, I I don't think that that's going to cause a problem. Um, and there's plenty of examples of the whiskey penetrating deep enough in the wood to keep the, the, the seal good for us to all of a sudden believe that we've got to go through this cork wetting process. But there's probably some more research that needs to be done on this to mm-hmm. really come to a solid conclusion. And I guess the biggest question that I had after I did this research is, does cork wetting actually negatively impact the cork? Mm. Right? Yeah. And I, I really don't know. Because, it, you know, when you think about it logically, if what's normally keeping the cork expanded is the moisture that's inside the bottle, um, is that higher or lower exposure to the caustic ethanol than when you wet the cork? Right. Right. And I don't think wetting the cork is going to do anything to help the top of the cork not dry out because it doesn't penetrate that mm-hmm. far. Right. Sounds like a good future episode idea. I, right? I I don't even know how we could research. I mean, it. no, no, we could we could test it. We could, okay. So we wet a cork once a week for however long, and then you leave one just upright, and then I don't know. You could test it that way, see if the alcohol does damage the cork over time. Yeah. I mean, that's all you, brother. You could do that. Yeah, we'll do all, that with all the free time you have. He he leaves me to do all of the yeah. You the, just let me know the weird when to show stuff. up with my cameras, and we'll he shows it. up with cameras, and then we record. So I, I, I think in conclusion, if you're storing your whiskey upright, I don't think that wetting your cork is uh, going to make a drastic difference in the outcome that you have with that mm-hmm. bottle. Um, and I, I know that the largest bars in the world, and I know that some of the largest collectors in the world, they agree with me. Sure. And I will admit that if you start Googling this, you're going to find contradictory information on major distillery websites. Yeah. And so. I guarantee that there's going to be, I don't know, look under this video, 40,000 comments, comments of people, people saying how wrong we are. Sure. <laughs> that's, so, that's okay. Just so long as you explain scientifically why we are wrong, yeah. how the cork wetting impacts the cork differently than the humidity inside the bottle. If you can explain that to me, I'll refilm this episode. Absolutely. All right. By yourself. Well, that's all we've got uh, for you today. We'd like to thank you for tuning into the show if this is your first time and tell you a little bit about our show philosophy. We are all about bringing people together around bourbon. Mm -hmm. And that's because I lost a loved one to suicide. And in the aftermath of that, I was looking for a way to bring people together uh, so they didn't feel that you know, since a, a not having the community around them the way that my brother did when he made that decision. And I saw how whiskey brought people together like none other. Mm-hmm. And I figured if I can get you connected to whiskey, the whiskey will do the rest of the job and get you connected to others. And Wes, in his infinite wisdom, finally convinced me to start Bourbon Real Talk Community, which is a forum that's designed to help facilitate relationship building. Mm-hmm. Um, by people of all different walks of life because we find that when we get together over a pour of this brown spirit, it uh, it doesn't really matter when we have different ideological views. Right. And that's what we're looking for here. Uh, so going through the research to see what online forums there are out there, we saw troll behavior in a lot of spaces on the internet, and we don't allow that in Bourbon Real Talk community, but those trolls did teach us something important, and that is if a stranger can hate you online, There's nothing that keeps us from loving you online. And that's why we end the show the same way every week. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we We love love you. you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Do the tappy thing. Sorry. That's the only place to do it, honestly. The you gotta, most. you gotta be careful. You don't want to have a slip and fall. So you have to twerk carefully in the shower. Here, come around here. And then. Depending on your situation. Yeah, depending on yeah. And what you're working with. And yeah, exactly. Like that if is. You're, if you're working with a lot, it's dangerous. It's in the dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. Shower is a dangerous place to twerk. 
In the steep hills of the rockiest of mountains, under beaming sun or windy winters, a prideful goat stands tall. The whiskey offers smooth yet bold flavors to be enjoyed anywhere with anyone. So take a leap and discover the complex and beautiful sceneries of the prideful goat with us. I'm Randy Selvin, host of Bourbon Real Talk. My business partner, Christopher Hart, the host of Whiskey Neat, and I partnered with Giant Texas Distillers to create the whiskey brand, The Prideful Goat. That intro was one of the drafts for The Prideful Goat's back label. And the truth is, the name just sounded cool. There is no significance to the name, which makes the back label story a little bit difficult. We felt some of that was a little too fanciful for our target audience. Our goal was to create a whiskey by whiskey lovers for whiskey lovers. Cash strength, non-chill filtered, straightforward, no fluff. We're currently sold in California, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Louisiana, and Florida. And we're proud to announce that we're coming soon to Georgia, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, and Canada. If you want a quality whiskey that was curated for enthusiasts, head over to pridefulgoat.com and use the store locator. If your local store doesn't have it, just use the contact feature and we'll tell you how they can get it. We also have some pretty awesome Prideful Goat merchandise, including etched glens and t-shirts. If we're not sold in your state, don't worry about it. Sealbox and Bourbon Outfitter both carry our products for lower than average retail price. With no sales tax and discounts for multiple bottle shipping, in many cases you can get the Prideful Goat delivered to your door for less money than you would have spent at your local store. We hope you enjoy our little project. Cheers! <laughs>